Welcome back. It's been another wild week in Washington with President Trump admitting he doesn't have taped conversations with former FBI Director James Comey, a GOP win in a special congressional election in Georgia, and the unveiling of the Senate Republican health care proposal. And joining us to discuss the events of this week is the pol political editor of the Herald Tribune, Zach Anderson, New College political science professor Frank Alcock, and Sarasota Republican chairman and state representative Joe Gruders. Gentlemen, Thank you very much for, for joining us. But, uh, Frank, the first question is to you. You have a president whose approval rating is down to 36 percent, whose campaign and himself personally is under criminal investigation by a special counsel. Why can't you win any special congressional elections? Well, that was a tough district to win. Uh, you're going against the, the tide. And I think the polarized state of the country, regardless of how angry people are and disappointed they are with the Trump administration, you still come back to some of the fundamentals there. It's going to be hard to overperform. And my understanding in terms of why the country wanted to make that race all about Trump, over the last month or so, both candidates were actually trying to run to the center and make it more about uh, themselves. And so, yeah, there is a little bit of disappointment in that uh, a lot of the polls keep underestimating Republican support. It was a close race. I think uh, the Democrats overperformed there, uh, but it just wasn't enough to overcome that district. Joe, what does it say that I believe the Republican won by four points? Tom Price, who ran in November, won by, I think it was 22 points. So it was a lot closer than it was just a few months ago. Well, if you look at the same district, I think Donald Trump only won it by a point and a half. So it shows you that that race was competitive, certainly at Trump at the top of the ticket, you know, to now uh, the, our new congresswoman actually did better than Trump. But when you look at it, the Democrats were easy, were quick to say, this election is going to be a referendum on Trump. And what it proves is that people decided to stay with Donald Trump and the Republican voters and Republican philosophy up in D.C. And I think it bodes well for Republicans in 2018 because a lot of people are afraid that maybe nationwide, maybe the national political environment may be a, a bad, bad time to run if you're a Republican. But now, obviously, five special elections, five big wins. Republicans are on a roll. I think that once we could start passing some of these small issues, we could tackle health care, tackle tax cuts, and I think that we're in for an even better year in 2018. Of course, Zach, people want to know what implications that election and the other special elections have here on the Sun Coast and in the, the greater Tampa Bay area. Steve Shale, who is a, a very respected Democratic strategist, uh, pointed out that that Georgia race, that district, is redder, more Republican than the districts here, whether it's Vern Buchanan's district or Gus Belarakis or Dennis Ross. So you cannot necessarily take what happened there and apply it to the prospects here. That's true, but I do think that it is a bad sign locally for Democrats. If you look at like Vern Buchanan's district, the 16th congressional district, it's not that much less Republican than that district in Georgia. It's actually fairly similar. similar. And if you look at um, that district in Georgia, Trump only won that district by 1.5 percentage points, which was a big reason the Democrats ha thought they could win that. E even though it's a Republican district, it wasn't necessarily a Trump district. Buchanan's district, Trump won by 11 percentage points. This is more Trump country here. So, uh, you know, they couldn't win that race even though Trump performed poorly there uh, relative to some other Republican seats. And the, the Democratic candidate, Ossoff, he got $23 million. I mean, just raised an enormous amount of money. A local Democrat is probably going to raise much less money and go up against a, a, a Republican that has a lot more money. Frank, uh, Steve Shell goes on to say the best thing that the Democrats can do is find good candidates. So what are the Democrats doing to find good candidates? They're working very hard. Uh, they're out there contacting uh, a lot of folks. Um, I've been contacted uh, myself. It's just, it's a year and a half out, uh, and the Democrats got to keep working hard. And this terrain here, you need people uh, willing to step forward that are high quality candidates when the prospects are, are going to be less than 50%, probably considerably less. Joe, I mean, it's not the I, easiest sell. I, I think candidates really matter. It makes a big difference. Ossoff, you know, he was kind of a generic Democrat. 30 years old, didn't have deep roots in the community. I think to win in these Republican districts, you have to have somebody who has a lot of credibility in the community if you're a Democrat. All right, we are just getting started <coughs> with this conversation, and we will pick it up right after we check on the weather. 
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the week in Washington. Our guests tonight are the politics editor for the Herald Tribune, Zach Anderson, political science professor Frank Alcock, and Sarasota Republican chairman and state representative Joe Gruders. So finally, the, uh, the, the senators, uh, the Republican senators unveiled their health care proposal after the House passed one uh, some time ago. Uh, Joe, it's being described as landing with a thud. Uh, that uh, you have a number of Republican senators who say that they will not vote for it. Others, the more moderate ones, haven't even spoken to it. And according to a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, by a three to one margin, the American public holds a negative view to the, the Republican proposal there. And strikingly, it goes on to say, even Republican respondents to the poll are lukewarm about the bill, only 34% viewing it positive. Well, my guess is most Republicans don't even know what's in the bill because it was just released. And you're right, there's not a lot of excitement, but I think what this is, is this is a starting point. And the biggest deal for me is, is I think one of the proposals is to end the individual mandate, which basically means that you're no longer going to be taxed or assessed a penalty if you don't have health insurance. The problem is, is a lot of people can't afford the, the health insurance, and as the Obamacare rates continue to rise, it's putting a lot of the middle class people who bears the brunt of the Obamacare expenses. And I will just tell you from a personal standpoint, my health insurance, we had a great plan. We went on to Obamacare. We ended up paying probably 1000 or 1500 more a month. And we have this huge high deductible. So we probably paid twelve to 15000 in total more for our health care expenses as a middle class family, taking away all my expendable income. Obamacare is a bad deal. If we do nothing, it's going to collapse on its own. But I hope to God something changes because we can't, we can't continue on with the system Let that we have. Let me ask you this, because during the campaign, the president said he would not cu cut Social Security, not cut Medicare or Medicaid. This bill does, and the early feedback we have on it is the people who most should be concerned about this are older Americans, um, people who have uh, parents or grandparents in nursing homes, and there's a specter now about whether those people are going to get thrown out of those nursing homes. We That's yeah, I agree. That affects a lot of people here on the Sun Coast. The, the, the plan helps. I mean, if you're a high-income family, this is you're going to like this. If you're a wealthy American, you're going to like this. If you are a young American, relatively healthy, you're going to like it. You're probably going to be paying less for your health care. If you are a low-income American, you're going to get crushed. You're going to be paying a lot more for your health care. Middle-class, working-class families are probably going to be paying higher deductibles. Uh, they're also going to get, I think, plans that have... There, there are less safeguards in there, so you're going to get these lemon plans where they're going to realize that a lot of things that they thought were covered were not covered. Uh, and if you're somebody that uh, relies upon treatment for mental health uh, issues, um, addiction issues, those programs get crushed into this. Zach, how does that play here on the Sun Coast? I don't think it really changes the fundamental debate. The Senate bill is a little bit more generous than the House bill, but it's very, pretty similar. And the basic political dynamic is, you know, you have the, the left uh, really upset about this, pushing back. It's one of the animating forces behind these indivisible groups. And Republicans are a little bit lukewarm about it. So the energy is more on the left to try and protect this right now. As you said, the bills aren't extremely popular, but a lot of that will depend on how Republicans sell this come election time. So that could change. But I do know one thing. Health care is extremely personal to people. I was at a meeting this week where I talked to a man who wasn't very involved in politics, but he came out to one of these indivisible meetings because his son had a pre-existing condition and got health care under Obamacare and had to have brain surgery. And so it really pushed him into activism when he thought that this is going to be taken away. So it could be a very potent issue. Predictions here, because after the House barely passed their version of this bill, uh, you heard a lot of discussion, boy, it was that difficult in the House. It's going to be nearly impossible to do it in the Senate. In the end, does the Senate pass a bill, and in the end, does uh, the Senate and the House agree with a united bill that would be signed into law? Joe? Probably not. Uh, you know, you I don't thi think that they're no, going to get health care. But, but you never know. But obviously, something needs to change. My, my advice is let people have Obamacare, <laughs> let's continue on it, and let it be crushed under the system. Because eventually, rates can only get so high before the middle class raises their hand and say, I've had enough. But obviously, we're not there yet. You know, you know, we have to find some other long-term solution to address the rising medical, you know, uh, costs in, in the whole throughout the country. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if this bill is going to completely uh, fix all that. So as a result, I think it will continue to be a political hot potato, and I think the Republicans will pass. I'm kind of surprised with your position there, but, but Frank. Uh, 
truly it's a it's a coin flip I think but my prediction is that they actually do pass it and Republicans regret it for a generation Zach I think it's 50 50 right now it, you know the president is obviously very behind this he wants to get a win he's gonna push really hard he's worried that he's gonna lose face so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get to yes let's talk about Russia for a second uh, the president announced by tweet uh, yesterday that no he did not uh, tape uh, James Comey uh, after 41 days of basically floating it out there uh, and now you also have the specter of uh, the uh, story in the Washington Post today that they actually were able to see uh, Putin's orders to interfere in the election uh, Joe every time uh, the the administration the Congress wants to move on to other things Russia, Russia, Russia keeps on uh, creeping back into it. Uh, how difficult is it to move on with the agenda when you have this not going away? Well, the problem is the liberal, de liberal Democrats, Obama's holdover staff members that are in the administration, they won't let it go. And, and the Democrats have done a great <coughs> job since Trump's been elected of having constant disruption, trying to, trying to turn everything away from any type of policy that Trump, whether it be health care, whether it be tax cuts, anything else from, getting, from taking shape because you're constantly bombarding every, the American public. And, I, and at the end of the day, I think most Americans have enough common sense to know that there's no, the, the Donald Trump's not under investigation personally over this Russia scandal. I think it's going it, to, it, 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 I'm glad the special counsel's been ordered because I think it's going to, it will take time to, to go through everything. But I think Donald Trump and his administration, all of his guys will be completely exonerated and we can move forward. But that's not what people want to know. The de what the Democrats are trying to do is they just don't want Trump to have any type of advantage of trying to move his agenda forward. So they're constantly throwing these snowballs out and trying to hit people in the face. And, and to me, it's a, uh, uh, the, the Republicans have never acted like that. And to me, it's disappointing that they would, they would treat uh, this entire administration so far the way they have. Uh, Frank, what about uh, that? Because there have been so many leaks over the last five months, but the one thing we have not seen is any bombshell evidence of collusion. And is that the whole ball game? It, it might be. Uh, we're talking about on the whether it rises, whether the revelations and the information that's released rise to the level of uh, technically and legally collusion remains to be seen. Uh, at minimum, though, uh, you know, the, the, the Trump campaign uh, accepted, tacitly accepted uh, assistance in Russian meddling, refused to acknowledge it after the fact, refused to hold Russia accountable. While it might not rise to the level of obstruction in a criminal sense, uh, there's certainly interference on the part of the president in an investigation um, and gross misconduct. I mean, conduct unbecoming. And so while the leaks continue, you know, the more the lies, the more the leaks. But so what, it's specifically, not what specifically should he be charged with? What specifically did he do? I'm not sure if he's going to be charged with an actual crime. And it would probably be articles of impeachment if there was evidence that there was some sort of print. There is no quote, evidence. Quote, quote. There is no obstruction no. of justice. It, this whole thing is just a charade to take people away from the problems that face our country. That's why people hate politics. That's why people hate D.C. That's why people hate Tallahassee. We have to clean the system. We should come together as a country, Republicans, oh, Democrats, okay. and move Trump, forward. Trump has added to this a little bit. You know, firing Comey brought more attention Comey onto this whole... Comey should have been fired by, by, <laughs> by But it by brought Obama. more intention, uh, attention onto this whole issue. You know, maybe it was just a lot of smoke and there wasn't any fire there. But firing Comey, you know, brought in the special prosecutor. It's focused people more on this. So, you know, from a political perspective, Trump might have hurt if himself I, with that. If I was a Democrat, sure. if, real Hold quick. Hold on one second. Let okay. me just ask you this, this one question. I heard this the other day. Let's say Hillary Clinton won. Let's say Comey reopened the investigation into the emails, and then she fired him. Would you be pushing for impeachment? That investigation was ongoing as it was. But she, the, what Comey did, Same in, in my <laughs> eyes... What Comey did is he put himself and he tried to make himself more powerful than the president by getting involved in the election if early Hillary on, by Clinton doing this stuff with Clinton. Fired James Comey after he reopened the investigation. He, would Republicans if I was Hillary Clinton, Clinton, I would have fired him for the first day I took office. He, he, he shouldn't have been allowed to stay on because I think he put himself in a position to where we shouldn't be hearing the FBI d director come out with any type of these political okay. statements to change outcomes of elections. Right. He made himself more important than the president. He should have been fired a long time ago, and Donald Trump did the right thing. Okay. Let's take a break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests. Welcome back. We have been discussing a busy week in Washington, and our guests join us right now for final thoughts. So, uh, you know, we... 
boy, it's been such a wild ride the last couple of weeks. Joe, do you think in the end this was a good week for the president? Yeah, I think everything, every week that he continues to be office, in office is a good week. I think that he'll continue to try to work on specific policies, and, and I hope that either the health care bill or maybe his tax package bill, we could start getting some traction in Congress in D.C. and start passing maybe, I mean, so these bills are both huge packages, but maybe you can come out with something smaller but to every, get some momentum, and then I think every, that's what he needs to help his presidency Every yeah. time we start talking about health care or tax reform or infrastructure, then he tweets about Russia. Because the liberal Democrats are constantly isn't that throwing stepping the on your own message? The, the, the liberal Democrats are constantly isn't that stepping throwing on their own message. message. I, I certainly <laughs> think he should probably... to the White House in the middle of the night <laughs> and grabbing his... I, his, I, his I would probably his prefer that he, that he not tweet as much, but I think that uh, that's the way he is, and I think he likes to take his message directly to the public. Uh, I think overall he'll continue to improve. And, and listen, this is the first time he's ever held elected office, so he's learning, and I think he's only going to get better from here, and we're going to have big wins in I think I heard Joe say you know, every week that he stays in office is a good week, and I might have to agree with him. Every week that he avoids impeachment for another week relatively might be a, a good week for the Trump administration. Uh, Zach, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we do see you know, his, uh, his approval rating in a lot of polls now down to 36%. Do you suspect it's different here on the Sun Coast? Uh, yeah, I, I think he's more popular here. As I said, in Buchanan's district, you know, he got 11 percentage point wins. So, I mean, he's obviously more popular locally than he is nationwide. And when you talk to local Republicans, they're not concerned about this Russia stuff. You know, they're not, they're more focused on, you know, immigration, repealing Obamacare, some of these things. Until there's some really hard evidence that he did something wrong, I don't think most of his local supporters are going to turn on him. All right, we'll have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you. FYI, if you want to watch past roundtable discussions, they're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thank you to our guests for being here tonight. Zach Anderson is the politics editor for the Herald Tribune. Frank Alcock is a political science professor at New College. And Joe Guters is Sarasota's Republican chairman and state representative. When we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus a look into the Senate Republican health care proposal and what it will mean to the Suncoast coming up on Primetime Headlines.